So now we come down to, you know, we know the default choice, which is like going for DC optimizers. We know the uh, do it yourself or, or new to solar choice, which is micro inverters. But what about string inverters by themselves? And I have to say that currently my favorite is the string inverter with smart combiner. And the reason is, well, remember old school string inverters, the littlest bit of shade would wreak havoc on the entire system. So microinverters and DC optimizers, nowadays they serve a fire protection function, but they used to just serve an important performance boost in shaded environments. And nowadays the string inverters are more shade tolerant. So the shading arguments are still there, but not as much as they have been in years past. We also have new safety requirements, namely rapid shutdown. And NEC National Electric Code rapid shutdown says that anything outside a one foot perimeter of the array, and that, that means if you have, you know, in this case, a couple of different sub arrays, you know, what that, that means is that rapid shutdown, it's not applicable to the conductors that are underneath the array, but it is applicable to the conductors that are running through any kind of jumpers uh, between your subarray sections. And what rapid shutdown says is all conductors that are outside of one foot have to be able to be de-energized during an emergency. Like if the building's on fire, they don't want the solar array to be on while the building's on fire. They don't want live conductors hanging down into the building, arcing electricity into the building. Well, the you know the rapid shutdown combiner box just sits at the edge of the array, and so it's considered part of the array. If you can kill the power at that box, you don't have to kill it inside the array. Now, by putting uh, you know a DC solar edge optimizer on every other solar module you know, that kills the power right at the module. So, you know, Solar Edge has built in rapid shutdown compliance, even if there's no shade at all, the Solar Edge system is going to outperform the string inverter system simply because it's optimizing every single module on the rooftop and not just, you know, one third chunks. So why would you ever use string inverters? Why do I like string inverters better than say DC optimizers? And, and the reason is it's, it's serviceability of the array. So we had a question, you know, if the, if the solar array is three foot high or is three high by 12 wide, how do you get to that center module? So using this picture as an example, you know, okay, if, if this is our roof surface, Okay, we can get to the edges, we can get to the edges, we can get to the edges. How do we get to the center? And the answer is, well, you start at the top here, you take that module off, and then you get down to the bottom. So, yeah, you know, you can service modules that are in the center of the array. What becomes difficult is these clips that clip the modules onto the rails are made with stainless steel, and they easily strip. And so you're getting up on that rooftop, and now it's a slanted roof, remember? And so you are, you know, kind of, if this is, if the rooftop looks like this, if this is the top of the roof and we're in a portrait sketch and the, the modules cover the whole roof, you get up the other side of the roof, unscrew these clips, but then you have to get to that clip and that's a good five feet away from you. So you have to kind of hang, you know, upside down, you know, here's your, your knees on top of the array and your body. And you're just trying to, to Spider-Man <laughs> upside down across the roof with your drill bit to hit that clip so that you can remove that clip and remove the module off the rooftop. So it's not a fun task service a solar array and then once you do it with that you know now you have some rail to kind of latch onto and you do it again with the next module down so taking apart a solar array and then a t-bolt strip strips and if you don't have any extra 
T bolts. Then you have to take modules apart all the way down to the end of the row so that you can slide your nuts down into that channel. You know, uh, maintaining a solar array is is not. It's a rare task, but it's not a fun task. And so when I look at the rapid shutdown com combiner box, which you, know, you have to use a pass-through box anyway uh, if you want to use an internal conduit run, and I just think internal conduit runs look so good. The only thing that's weird about the uh, rapid shutdown combiner boxes is normally coming out of the array, you have your AC circuit, your, your positive circuit, and your negative circuit. And so coming out of your combiner, you'd have your positive circuit and your negative circuit. The uh, smart combiners will also take a neutral up to your DC box. And that's because the neutral is used as communication to uh, activate this uh, switch. So the question is, well, which do I like using? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, and it's it's we said microinverters for beginners. Solar Pros really like the the Solar Edge DC optimizer system. Um, but I got into the industry in 2008, and the buddy I got into the industry with, uh, we've since parted ways. But he does fleet management for um, uh, a a large solar financing and installation company. And I called him when I was getting to this conclusion. And it's funny because he was approaching it uh, uh, the same time as a fleet ma manager responsible for system maintenance uh, throughout the city. You know, what you find is even though, let's assume that there's truth to the claim that uh, for a module level panel electronics, you know, these have 25 year warranties on them. And these string inverters only have 10 year warranties on them. So let's just assume for the, the sake of argument that the microinverters and the DC optimizers are two and a half times more reliable than a string inverter by itself. Well, okay, but now you have 40 of them on your job site instead of one. And so if you have 40 operators, opportunities of failure, uh, one in, in you know, 0.25 chance, and whatever the right math is on that. You know, the point is, so even if the, the in-phase microinverters are, are, in fact, two and a half times more reliable, you still have a much stronger likelihood that one will go on the blink instead of that string inverter. And I can tell you this from experience. I can tell clients that, look, the microinverters are going to go on the blink, and we're not going to fix them if only one or two go on. We're going to just have to wait until six of them go out because that's the only way it makes sense for us to get up on the roof and start taking the array apart to replace them. And clients don't, you know, they, they, hear, they hear the argument that if one – inverter goes out, the rest of the system remains online. Whereas if one inverter, string inverter goes out, the whole system goes offline. You know, they hear that argument in the sales process, but then they get into the ownership process and they give you a call as soon as one microinverter goes offline. And it's like, well, the microinverter costs, you know, 80 or $90 and it's going to take me you know, four or five man hours to get up on the rooftop, take the module off and, uh, and, and swap out the microinverter and get it set up in the monitoring system. And so I'm going to have to bill you, you know, four or $500 <clears throat> to re replace a $90 part. And so you, you're just asking for unhappiness. Owner's unhappy because try as they might, that one microinverter on the rooftop that isn't working bugs the heck out of them. And you only reduce this a little bit with the solar edge system because instead of putting the entire microinverter on the roof, you only put one part of it on the rooftop. But a, a string inverter is the most simple system. And that means there are the fewest parts 
that could fail. And nowadays, the rapid shutdown combiner boxes have been on the market for over a year. And so, uh, you know, I think now's the time to start going back and looking at string inverters, especially because string inverters are are very on the ball with with the battery market too. And uh, eventually, they will be cheaper than the DC optimizer. So here's a system. We cover in other classes, but you know, like I like using the SMA inverters with the smart combiners because then down the road I can go and add the SMA battery inverter and uh, have the systems communicate elegantly with each other rather than inelegantly. Uh, in terms of module selection, but what we can see is that that thin film in general and SIGs and stuff, it's only about 9% of the market. In fact, nowadays, I think it's even less than that. So most of the market is silicon based. You know, my personal preference out of the silicon modules, I don't care about wattage. I don't care about efficiency. I mean, I'd rather have a less efficient, cheaper module than a more efficient, more expensive module. Uh, but my my preference is to find um, all black modules that have a nice all black aesthetic. We saw some pictures of that earlier. Um, but also monosilicon rather than polysilicon. Um, I don't know the data, but anecdotally, you know, monosilicon is a, a stronger cell than polysilicon. It's cut. Uh, rather than um, it's cut off of a cylinder of silicon rather than grown in a sheet and and uh, it's what what I'm seeing in the field is that the polysilicon modules show uh, in the cell integrity itself some signs of wear and tear uh, whereas you you don't get they're called snail trails you don't get these as much in uh, monosilicon modules Justin not a huge deal. Module reliability is very good, but just from a, a technical perspective. So I really like all black monosilicon modules with string inverters and rapid shutdown combiner boxes. Right now, it's a niche. Uh, most of the industry is on the DC optimizer option. The reason why I like the, the rapid shutdown is your rapid shutdown box might just be hidden underneath this module right here. So in terms of servicing, you just need to get to the corner of the array. Usually the module to module connections are, are not the failure point. It's the, uh, the failure point will be the, the home run circuit back to the combiner or somewhere in the inverter on off the rooftop. So I like keeping my circuits. I don't care about the middle of the array. I'm never going into the middle of the array to service it. If A, A, I don't use optimizers or microinverters, so there's nothing under the array that I ever need to service ever, then I don't need to go back into the array. And then also, if where my circuits start and stop, if my circuits can start and stop at the edges of the array rather than the interior of the array, then I'm really doing good because you know I have found that a common failure point in the systems is the circuit home run connector between the end of the circuit and that roof mounted combiner box. So if I keep all of my circuits ending at the edge of the array, then all of my potential failure points are accessible and the interior of the array doesn't matter as much. If you go and you use a microinverter on every single module on the rooftop, then uh, you're putting a failure point in the center of the array and uh, that can be problematic down the road. It usually is not problematic. It sometimes can be problematic. Many customers with in-phase microinverters report absolutely no issues ever. Uh, but then customers who do, you know, report seven or eight microinverters today and then you pretty much know that they have a bad batch in that five years from now, they're going to have seven or eight more microinverters to replace. And, and that's when you, once you have a project like that, you do a hard stop 
and, and never do module level panel electronics again uh, because of how much of a pain in the butt it is to get underneath the array and service them. Uh, so a few common configurations would be like uh, a SIGS module. And I do have to say that if the import, new import tariff passes, the Scion SIGS module is going to be a, at a very attractive price point. So uh, you if you could do a, a solar edge inverter with a DC optimizer on a SIGS module, which has weird voltages, which are perfect for optimizers. All black, made in America, great and frameless, which is great for saltwater environments or hot and humid environments, great for environments where it's a glass on glass module. So if you're in a wildfire zone, uh, it has a better flame spread rating than typical modules. Or you could do a, uh, you know, if uh, a 72 cell uh, ground mount with micro inverters and a ground mount kit. And this would be a pretty easy do it yourself kind of project, more expensive inverter, but you're you're doing it yourself. You make it up on labor. Um, or you could do uh, all black 60 cell mono with a string inverter and a rapid shutdown combiner box. And that's set up for easy battery expansion with the fewest parts. And so I, I tend towards kind of this end, but it's always good to know, it's always good to have some kind of high tech made in America option and also, uh, you know, be experienced with micro inverters too. You never know when a, a micro inverter array is going to be the best option. Firing diagrams can be found on the manufacturer website. As far as grounding goes, I've never found anything easier than uh, in addition to having your, your leg one, leg two, neutral, and equipment ground conduct. It's also uh, a common practice to take bare copper uh, up to the rooftop and land it on your rack. There are ways to ground the DC side of the array to the AC equipment ground conductor uh, and bring it back to the ground road below, but the, the rules get a little bit more fine-tuned. Um, the the problem I've run into with doing stuff like that is you say, okay, well, that's going to be my plan and I'll save the bare copper run up to the rooftop. But then you go with microinverters, for instance, you go and try and do a Romex run only to find out that the, the, the ground wire is undersized and it's not appropriate to use as, as a solar DC grounding electrode conductor. But just as a, not without trying to get too much into national electric code, uh, we have different terms for the ground wire that connects the whole system together versus the dedicated term for the ground wire that connects the ground bar to the actual grounding electrode. Um, and then you need a, a, a grounding electrode conductor that connects the ground bar to the actual grounding electrode. You, you need them for the AC side, you need them for the DC side, you need an AC equipment ground conductor. Uh, you sometimes need a DC equipment ground conductor, even for an ungrounded inverter, it might have a metal box frame that needs to be connected to the grounding system. But the, the rule of thumb for grounding is all metal parts need to be grounded and uh, the easiest thing to do is to run bare number six up to the rooftop in addition to whatever bundled cable you have.